Hello friends, Phil here. Today we picked up some more equipment for almost machining. Check this stuff out. We've got a two to four inch bore gauge, a uh, basically an analog zero to 12 inch height gauge. This is a zero to 18 height gauge. Uh, I guess a zero to six inch digital uh, depth gauge. And then we also got this guy. This is a 24 inch Mitsu Toyo 192.607. It was missing the back battery cover and in about the halfway up area it started getting really tight. It also didn't have a battery cover and I wasn't sure how the battery was going to go so in the process of taking it apart I managed to rip the strip. So in this video we're going to repair this strip get the bars realigned cleaned up get the rest of this piece of equipment cleaned up and get it back together and get it working the way that it should so one of the things that we encounter right off the bat is when coming up this got extremely tight right here it's uh the rods were not quite positioned because of the top cap the top cap was pulling things a little bit one way and we're going to be fixing this later on once we got all the pieces out there was a lot of trash located inside of here so we'll be cleaning this out completely, um, recleaning the surfaces that mate. That'll be after we complete fixing the electronic. We're going to reconnect these connections here. We'll solder that back up, get it back on the board, make sure that we've got the right battery voltage. What I'll do is I will I'll scrape the lines and I'll put some jumper wires in between there, put it back together. And then we'll get the voltage back onto this, back together, and get the rest of the unit cleaned up. So let me get set up to do some soldering. So what I'm doing is I'm separating out these little three little wires here. I only need to replace three. Get these guys tinned up. Cut some of the excess off. Go to the other side, do the same thing. Start with this one right here. You guys want to move around. connected and the last one is now connected so three new joints for that and then what I'll be doing is bridging them onto the existing wire spot here there in there. Okay, that completes this repair. Okay, we have the strip back in. This is BCC. BDD. Click. Okay, it's on.
Okay. So the encoder seems to be working now that uh, I've reconnected the wires. We'll start getting this back together once we get the other pieces cleaned up. Let's go over and start cleaning up those other pieces. So we got the big bulky metal pieces cleaned up and we put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, washed out all the dirt and grime that was inside of there. Some of the pieces down inside had collected dust through the years of wherever this thing was. We're going to start getting this back together. We'll start with assembling the electronics. There's seven screws that hold this guy in place. They're here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start getting the body back onto the rods. First thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of lubrication inside of there. Now these stop screws, what you do is you screw them down until you know that they have solid contact for stopping. At least this is how I like to do it. So that it's locked. I want to make sure that when I open it back up, that's in a, that it's in a position that doesn't affect how the device operates. So I open it here. I can slide it, lock it back down, and carry on. Now the next thing we're going to be putting on is the gear rack for the encoder. It has a, a built-in anti-backlash piece right here, and it goes in under the rack area. We're going to gently place the screws in. I'm not going to tighten anything up right now. Because I want to make sure that the encoder is, fun at least it is spinning, the encoder wheel. Now I'm going to take this, stand it back up, and start installing the other pieces. So now I'm going to put the tensioner in there. We'll drop a boil on it. Okay, these two screws get put in place at this point in time. Drop oil on the This piece. And then this wheel. That's the fine adjust uh, gear rack. wiring back in place. And 
then there are two screws that go back here. The case was previously damaged. Now we can put the crank back on. Just gonna lightly slug this on using the crescent. I should be able to do all right, fine adjustment. Now we're still missing the upper cover, so to get around that for now, a little alligator clip connected there. This is our positive side. Okay, I'm going to put the other end of the battery or the alligator clip on the top of this battery. And then for now, I'm just going to use these right here to connect those two batteries. And then, there we go, she's on. I can't see it, but I think it's working. All right. Get the top cap on, the bumper O-rings in first. Cap comes on. For, or for the four set screws that hold it in place. So I'm making sure that it has a really good smooth range of motion going down and coming back up. Let's get this foot back on. leaves just these two little covers to put on this is the one that goes on the back and it was held in place by uh, tape we'll probably end up doing the same thing and then this one gets glued on the very top this is just CA glue before it had been epoxied on there Until we get a, an actual cap made, this is going to be a temporary to run some tests really quick with this. Okay, we're set up here on the surface plate. We have a 1, a 2, and a 4 inch gauge block to, to set this on just to see how it is between the two or the three of them. We'll come down, touch. Zero out on the one inch, come up, come back down under the one inch, point one, again, point one, zero it, zero, 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 okay, come up with the one inch out of the way, with a two inch in, this should be one inch. One inch, one inch, one inch. If I come up to three inches, this should be three inches on the three inches, three inches, three inches. Three plus two is five. I should ring these together. You should be very careful. Five inches. So other than the replacement battery cover on the top, this seems to be a fairly nice unit now. You can come down, zero out on a two inch gauge block, come up, stack a one inch on top of that, comes back down. We've gone up one inch. That's ideal for this type of gauge at the price point. We've taken it completely apart, cleaned it up, got it back together, working just fine. Please subscribe and thanks for watching. Okay, so I've just switched it over to millimeter. 
I'm going to raise it up a little bit, come back down, make sure we're zeroed. So we should be 25.4 millimeters away. 25.4 millimeters away. Working good in metric.